The formation of identity is one of the most important parts of a person's life. Jewish psychologist Eric Erickson. He listed eight stages of identity development. I'm only going to give you two. The first one is trust versus mistrust. This stage occurs between the ages of birth and two years and is centered on developing a sense of trust in caregivers and the world. Children who receive responsive care are able to develop the psychological quality of hope. Holding a child and, and caressing and touching and speaking to a child in those first few years is so important because it helps to develop their identity and they do develop that sense of hope. On the end of the list, at the end of your life, the eighth stage is called integrity versus despair. The final stage of this psychosocial development takes place in late adulthood and involves reflecting back on life. Those who look back and feel a sense of satisfaction develop a sense of integrity and wisdom, while those who are left with regrets may experience bitterness and despair. In the beginning, we develop hope. When we come to the end, we hope that we've gone through all eight stages and we end with integrity or we end with wholeness, wisdom. We look back over our life and we've settled in to who we are and what we're called to do. And there's a satisfaction that comes with that. Erickson coined the term identity crisis and believed that it was one of the most important conflicts people face in development. There's a constant struggle in life. The Bible says it this way, work out your salvation with fear and trembling. According to Erickson, an identity crisis is a time of intensive, intensive analysis and exploration of different ways of looking at oneself. You're exploring through life and you're trying to figure out who you are. And what God has called you to do, it's a conflict that we're constantly going through throughout our life. And we know that there are different things that impact that exploration as we're trying to discover ourselves. One is neglect and or abuse. This will impact a child and their identity. One is crisis moments where there's a bad moment, something that a tragedy that happens in our life can't shape the identity of a person. Things like opinions of others, what other people think of me and what they say of me can shape my identity. Jesus asked the disciples at one point, who do men say that I am? And then past failures and mistakes. Failures and mistakes that create regret shape and mold people's identity, who they are and what they feel they can or cannot do. And this is a fact. Your past history will determine your present behavior and it will shape your future plans. And therein lies the danger. Your history can, can determine how you act today. And it can shape the plans that you make for your future. While in prayer on Saturday morning, 3 a.m., April the 27th, 2019, Holy Spirit spoke to me and he said, Randy, you must see yourself through your father's eyes. Thus the message through your father's eyes. We have to learn how to see ourselves, not as people see us, but as our father sees us. And everybody said amen. amen. But people today, especially today, especially today, people are in a identity crisis, unsure of the real you, unsure of your role in life, unsure of your values and your beliefs, and unsure of your passion for living. I've said this many times before, I never cease to be amazed at how people have lost their passion for living. They don't People don't get up anymore with a drive to go out and to make a difference. They, they no longer have that sense of destiny. I've often spoke to you about you need to find your destiny. And I've changed that this year. I'm now saying live with a sense of destiny and your destiny will find you. 
Just live with a sense of destiny. Get up every morning and just remember that I am fearfully and wonderfully made and God's got a plan for my life and then get out there and go to it and the plan will find you. How many believes that men, men may make their plans but it is the Lord that directs his steps. So live with a sense of destiny and your destiny will find you. Jeremiah 29, 11 reads, for I know the thoughts that I think towards you. Towards you, says the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you a future and a hope. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you. I have a question for you today. What does God know about you that you don't know? Mm. Let's title this today, Do You Know Who You Are? Pray with me. Father, thank you for your word. I already sense the anointing in your presence. You're going to speak today, Holy Spirit. I declare it, and lives are going to be transformed. There's revelatory knowledge coming, not only a revelation of who you are, but of who we are in Christ Jesus. I pray blessings on this moment. And everyone said amen. Amen. Identity confusion. Sociologists have a theory of the mirror self. Those in social work have this saying, mirror self. And it means that we become what the most important person in our life thinks of us. That's why child abuse is such a damnable thing. When we emotionally or verbally or physically or sexually abuse a child, you not only sin against the image of the parent, but you sin against the image of God. You sin against the image of that child. And they are thrown into an identity crisis. And they struggle trying to figure out who they are. As we have seen the movie, The Lion King, we see Simba's conflict. This young man was conflicted. Number one, he felt that he was being measured against his father. You remember the story when he said to his father, I was just trying to be brave like you were. When he put his his paw in his father's paw print, he realized that I could never measure up to him. How could I ever measure up to my father? Galatians 6 and 4, Paul said, each one should test their own actions. Then they can take pride in themselves alone without comparing themselves to someone else. Paul makes it clear that when we compare ourselves to one another, that is foolish. And remember this, where there is a duplication, one is unnecessary. We don't need who of anybody we need each person to discover who they are because you're fearfully and wonderfully made as unique as your thumbprint is so is your life and we have discovered here at cathedral when you do what you do the way you do it you're dangerous you're dangerous you're a dangerous person when you step into who you are and you do it the way God intended for you to do it. When Saul tries to put his armor on you, you shake that off and you pick up a rag and a rock and you're dangerous out on the battlefield. You can accomplish great things and slay giants when you are who God called you to be. Think about that. When I step into my authentic self, I'm dangerous. I am able to express myself the way God intended. So understand that where there's a duplication, one is unnecessary. We don't need two of anything. We need the authentic you. And everybody said, that's me. Number two, Simba's conflict. He was being defined by the opinions of others. You remember with the tragedy of his father, Mufasa, Uncle Scar came and said, Simba, what have you done? Think of that. Mark chapter 6, you remember Jesus goes to Nazareth. Now, he's born in Bethlehem, raised in Nazareth. Nazareth was a small town. 
uh, you theologians don't hold me to this, but I think it was about 500 people. So this is a small town. And everybody knows everybody, and everybody is in everybody's business. Who, who came from a town of 500 people or less? Raise your hand. Okay, so you get it. Everybody was all up in your business. That's just the way it is in small towns. And Jesus was raised in Nazareth, and he decides to go back to his hometown to minister. And you remember the story. He shows up. He's, he's, he's very impressive. In the beginning, people are impressed by him. But then suddenly, in verse 3, it said, isn't this Mary's son? And they took offense at him. You see, we all remember that Mary was found to be with child before she was married to Joseph. And so we know how rumors get out in small towns. And so when Jesus shows up, they go, hey, this is, man, this guy can really preach. Wow. Wait. Isn't that Mary's boy? Familiarity does breed contempt. And suddenly they realize that's Mary's boy. Oh, you see, they didn't speak of Joseph. In the Jewish culture, you track a boy through his father's line, not his mother's. And they never said that's Joseph's boy because they didn't think he was. They believed that Jesus was an illegitimate child. And they said, that's Mary's boy. And they took offense at him. People will take offense. Listen, guys, this is another message for another day. But you have to take offenses. Let that settle in. You say, well, I've been offended. Well, it's because you took it. Oh, now, see, it's, okay. You take offense. You choose to be offended. And they took offense at him. He could not do many miracles there except a few. Then Jesus went. Say, then Jesus went. Around teaching from village to village. The revelation there is that they took offense at him. They rejected him. They labeled him an illegitimate child. The son of God became illegitimate that I, who am illegitimate, might become the son of God. They labeled him an illegitimate boy, but he did not allow their rejection to shut him down. He then, after their rejection, he then went from village to village teaching and preaching the gospel. Guys, you can't let rejection shut you down. You cannot be defined by the opinions of others. Remember this, men's denial cannot block your destiny. Men's denial cannot block your destiny. You say, but pastor, my family has rejected me. The church has rejected me. My community has rejected me. Men's denial cannot block your destiny. They may try to deny you access, but they can't do it. Just be who you are and do what you do the way you do it, and you're dangerous when you do that. Never allow the opinions of others to define you. Simba, what have you done? And he ran from his past. Be careful. Be careful. When you run from your past, you're nothing more than a runaway slave. You've got to be careful. Number three, talking about Simba's conflict. Conflict. Guilt and shame over a crisis moment. You remember the story. He came and he found Simba with Mufasa, and he said, run away, Simba. Run away and never, ever return. Guilt and shame over a crisis moment, a failure, a mistake in your life. Simba was running. Luke chapter 9, verse 62. But Jesus said to him, no one, having put his hand to the plow and looking back, is fit for the kingdom of God. When you put your hand to the plow and you begin to plow in the kingdom, you can't constantly be looking back over your shoulder. Your furrows are going to be crooked. You're not going to be straight and narrow. You're constantly going to be missing the mark. When you plow with you're looking over your shoulder, you're not fit. You're not in shape. You're not healthy. You're not strong enough for the kingdom of God. You're going to miss God's plan for your life. So know this, talking about the past, the past, talking about the mistakes I've made, the failures of my life. It's not what you are, but what you think you're not that's holding you back. We know this. We've said this before. It's not what I am. Excuse me. It's not what I am, what I was, what I did that's holding me back. It's what I think I'm not. I think I can't. 
I think I can. God won't, people never will. I can. It's not what you are that's holding you back. It's what you think you're not. How many believes that Christ in you is bigger than your circumstances around you? It's not what you are, but it's what you think you're not. That's what's holding you back. A poverty mentality, a small mentality. Example, Kadesh Barnea, Moses, Joshua, three million people, cross over, take the promise of God. Take the promised land or the land filled with promises. But 10 spies turn the heart of a nation by simply saying, we look like grasshoppers in our own eyes. We look like grasshoppers. It wasn't the size of the people that held them back. It was the size of their mentality. They had a grasshopper mentality and that prevented them from doing what God called them to do. So regardless of where you are, place the full weight of who you are on his grace. On his grace. How many believes that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me? Put the full weight of who you are. I'm not making, I'm not making allowances for sin. I'm not making allowances, allowances for any of that. I'm just telling you that God knows who you are, and yet he chose you before the foundation of the world, and he says, I can work with you if you'll just submit to me. Put the full weight of who you are on the grace of God, and with the grace of God, you can do with him what you could never do alone. Moses stuttered, and yet God still used him. Put the full weight of who you are on the grace of God. Yeah. The conflict. This identity confusion that Simba was going through, measured against his father, defined by Uncle Scar, and then guilt and shame over what he did. And he said, I can't go back to my destiny because of this identity confusion. Number two, let me talk to you about my father's reflection. First Corinthians 13, for now we see only a reflection in a mirror, then we shall see face to face. Not, now I know in part, then I shall know fully, even as I am fully known. Notice this, I'm looking at a reflection in a mirror, and the mirror is the word of God, but God already knows me fully but he knows me as I shall be and not as I am because he has a prophetic voice and he calls things that are not as though they are. So I'm not a victim of my past. I'm a victor of my future. So I will not be defined by where I've been, but I'm defined by where I'm going. He fully knows me. He fully knows where I'm going. So here's, here's the issue. Psychologists, those that do social work, understand and believe that people that have a high commitment uh, uh, to identity, who they are, I know who I am and I know what I'm gonna do in life. Researchers have found people who have a high commitment to that are happier and healthier. Just something to think about. So let's talk real quick about Simba's moment of commitment. Number one, he was told by his father, remember who you are. Remember who you are. He saw his reflection in the water. He saw his father's reflection in the water. James 1.24. You perceive how God sees you in the mirror of the word, but then you go out and forget your divine origin. You forget your divine origin. We so often forget who we are as the sons of God. Romans 8 says, all of creation is groaning, waiting for the sons of God to be revealed. So no matter where you are, there is more to who you are. No matter where you are right now, you say, Pastor, you don't know what's going on in my life. I'm telling you, there's more to you than what we see. You're bigger on the inside than what we see on the outside. There's more to you. Mufasa said to Simba, remember who you are. You have, there's more to you than what you see. So guys, you've got to remember, remember who you are in Christ Jesus. This moment of commitment. I'm going to commit to who I am in Christ. Number two, you got to face the pain of your past. You remember the story, Rafiki. 
and what he said. You remember, put it on the screen, guys. Rafiki, he had a stick. I went and I told him, go get me a stick. Who wants to come up here and volunteer? Let me demonstrate what Rafiki did. <laughs> that hurt. It doesn't matter. It's in the past. Yeah, but it still hurts. Yeah, the past can hurt, but either you run from it or you learn from it. Rafiki. And do not give me that nickname from here on out. <laughs> the past. Genesis 3.11. God said to Adam, excuse me, Adam said to God, I heard your voice and I hid myself. God said, who told you that you were naked? Think of this. God comes walking in the cool of the day. Adam hears his voice and he hides. God calls him out and says, Adam, where are you? I hid myself from you. Never allow the voice of shame over your past. Silence the voice of Holy Spirit in your present. Never allow it. I can't hear the voice of God because of the voice of shame. 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 Rafiki was trying to teach Simba, I know the past hurts, but you can either keep running from it and being a runaway slave. Because guys, listen, you think you're running from your past, but you're not. You're just a runaway slave. You're still bound today as you were yesterday. That's why we say here at Cathedral all the time, the past cannot be changed, only forgiven. You've got to forgive it. You got to forgive yourself. You got to forgive others, or else you're just a runaway slave. You've got to let it go. But so often, the voice of shame will silence the voice of Holy Spirit. I can't hear what God is saying to me. I can't hear what God is calling me to do. And I'm hiding from God. I can't hear his voice because of the voice of shame that's in my head saying, I remember what you did. You've got to face the pain of your past and you've got to deal with it. Number three. Simba decided to go back. You remember as he went back to Pride Rock, he made the statement, this is my kingdom. If I don't fight for it, who will? Sons of God, think of that. This is my kingdom. And if I don't fight for it, who will? John chapter 3. Jesus said, let me say it again. Unless a person submits to the original creation... The wind hovering over the water creation. That's Elohim. The invisible moving the visible. A baptism into a new life. It's not possible to enter God's kingdom. He said unless a person submits to original creation. When you look at people, the Bible says men men looks at the outward appearance. God judges by the heart. When you look at the outward person, you see mistakes and you see failure. But God looks at the heart and he sees the original creation, the original ideal, the original plan. And you've got to submit to that original plan and that original creation. We must all learn to look into the mirror and see someone that we accept by faith and not by our feelings, the original you. You've got to get back to the original you. You've got to be certified original. This is who I am. God said to Abram, ah, you're not Abram, you're Abraham, which means the father of many, but you have no children. That's okay. I'm going to stamp you original. I'm going to get you where I want you to be. That's why the spirit of prophecy is so important because the spirit of prophecy gets us from where we are to where God needs us to be because it speaks to us and it says, this is not who you are. This is where I'm taking you. You've got to get back to the original you. Who am I in Christ Jesus? Listen, guys, look, you, I, look, I know that we think. I want, you to, I want you to look at the Ten Commandments a different way. I want you to twist it. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Listen, we look at that as behavioral modification. Let's look at it a different way. Let's look at it as identity. Speaking to the new creation in me, you shall not commit adultery. You shall not kill 
You shall not bear false witness. That's not who you are. Remember, he calls things that are not as though, as though they are. We look an adulterer, but God looks at him and says, no, you're not an adulterer. You're coming out of that by the blood of the lamb. And you're a child of God. You're a son of God. You're going to be faithful. You've got to get back to the original you, the plan that God had in his mind before the foundation of the earth. You say, well, I've messed it all up. I know you have, but you got to get back to God's original plan. He says, I know the thoughts I have for you. I've got a plan. I see you. Then you look at, the, and I know what he sees and what you are don't match right now, but it's going to. Because we're working out our salvation with fear and trembling. you got to get back to the original you. Because with nobility comes obligation. Simba, you got to go back to Pride Rock. Why? Because you're the king. I don't want to go back. You don't know what I did. It doesn't matter. you got to face your past. you got to take your position. Because with nobility comes obligation. You ain't got time to commit adultery. You ain't got time to fornicate. You ain't got time to get drunk and play the fool. You ain't got time to do all those things. Because you're a son of God. You're a daughter of God. Rise up and take your place. Nobility. It comes with obligation. Stephen, come help me. You ain't got time to play the fool. Nobility, nobility. Ah, with it comes obligation. Nobility. Simba, you need to go back. I can't, but you're the king. No, I'm not. You don't know what I did. The voice of shame silencing the voice of God. And I hide in the garden because I feel, I feel like a failure. Shame is a horrible thing. You've got to shake that off. And you've got to face your past. You've got to deal with it. We're talking about identity. Do you know who you are? You're a son of the king. Do you know who you are? But I want to ask you a question. Are you waiting for someone to tell you who you are? Is that the problem? You're just waiting for somebody, please tell me who I am. Psalms 139. Your eyes saw my unformed body, the original you. All the days ordained for me were written in your book. We call it the book of destiny. Before one of them came to be. Book of destiny. Leave it on the screen, guys. Listen, I got up this morning early and was tweaking my message. And I felt Holy Spirit prompt me. Sometimes he'll take a stick and poke me. This is what he spoke to me. If you will give him time, he will read to you from his book of destiny, bedtime stories, not of where you have been, but where he would like to take you. Maybe we need to write a new book. Not bedtime stories that we read to our children, our grandchildren, about other characters and other heroes but maybe we should tell them bedtime stories about who they are and what great things they are going to do perhaps we should sit down with them and say I see in your future that God's going to use you and you're going to do great things Holy Spirit shared with me that he wants to spend time with me and from the book of destiny Read me bedtime stories of who I am and what I'm going to do. Oh, my God. Mufasa said to Simba, you are more than what you have become. There's more to you than what you have become. 
Jeremiah 29, 11, God said, I know the thoughts that I'm thinking towards you. Thoughts of peace and prosperity to give you a future, to give you hope. I know the thoughts I'm thinking. So again, today, I want to ask you a question. What does God know about you that you don't know? Spend time with him. And from his book of destiny, let him read you bedtimes, stories.